Hi everyone, welcome to Hobby Hangout. We've got John with us this week again, back again. It's a good time. How are you, John? Uh, doing well, doing well. Finished right. up a very interesting project that maybe people will see sometime. Awesome. Uh, before we start, Ben, can we hear Ben? I am singing. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I believe we can. It shows up anyway. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, Yay! unfortunately, we have an issue that Ben just doesn't come up on the screen because. Skype doesn't allow it. Boo! <laughs> so we're going with the hideous looking cat this week instead. So uh, I hope you all will enjoy that. Today on Hobby Hangout, we're going to be looking through your projects. And if you don't know what On Tabletop are, come across to OnTabletop.com. Click this here Hobby Hangout icon. And if you have any projects or anything you'd like to know about, feel free to post in there. We have some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Blinky465 has been nominated by Sundancer, thank you very much. We are going to be looking through this project, which is phenomenal by the way. Uh, but first, uh, I think we're going to have a look at uh, the <laughs> Sheriff of Hoppingham and his fellow followers, Burrows and Badgers. Can we just, More yeah, can we like, just look at that again? Like this cover, right? I like this, this cover, <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, by the way, uh, we see everyone in the chat here, uh, we have some fantastic projects lined up and if you want to nominate any projects, come up as well, feel free to put it in the comments and we'll get to see it. Uh, but first off, we're looking at this marvellous project which has nothing really to do with this cat, but I suppose it's, you know, animal-like by Jock. Jockey? It's animal doing something yeah. human. <laughs> So this is the Burrows and Badgers tree and our characters that Ben also love. Oh, uh, so good. So, so if you want to take over this, Ben, I will happily allow it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Jock or Jock or however I say his name, he's been doing an amazing uh, job of painting up some of his miniatures that he's picked up for playing Burrows and Badgers. I do believe, I, I think I got a message from him uh, maybe two weeks ago and he was saying that he's managed to get uh, not only himself uh, and a couple of friends but also his his, uh, his partner into the game as well which is really cool and they've been setting up and playing some games and, and getting used to playing Burrows and Badgers and I love this setup uh, and the kind of warband he's going for here all of the creatures looking great it's a really nice one to see potentially warbands that just don't have mice in them like a lot of people throw mice in because they're nice and cheap and you can equip them with a whole bunch of stuff but these guys all look very characterful and awesome and I love that the, the fact that the green ties them all together too mm. um, it's really nice seeing those final pictures of everything set up on the board as well uh, that's a nice really nice way to sort of show things off uh, um, as, as a whole there and those mushrooms are great on the bases too yeah those. Robert was just saying in chat about the, the mushrooms on the bases I think that's mm -hmm. a good touch it's a nice little splash of colour because everything else looks yeah. a little I don't know worn darker i'm not sure i think it's the fur uh yeah the fur kind of takes away like with animals yeah you can't really unless you're really going to go with a cartoon vibe you can't really change color of fur yeah too mm -hmm. too vividly anyway um but you, you can do the best with the armor uh this armor seems to be quite done like almost realistic in a way yeah so there's a little, little bit of realism with like a just nice contrast of green and stuff. Mm. I love the eyes mm. these worked on here as well. I've, I've I'm still only unfortunately painted my squirrel knight. I still have right, come on, John. I mean, <laughs> man, you have to motivate me, man. You have to tell me that next time you're over, we're going to play it, and then I might paint something. Well, next time I'm over, we're going to play it, John. So. I'm like, I'm like a lappy. Hmm? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> You're just gonna have to bring your own uh, models, Ben, and just yeah. leave them with us. I mean, so, I've got like I've got like a billion models now, and the Kickstarter's coming soon as well. Yeah. Next week, I think. So, yeah, we'll have a lot of things to paint and play around with. I um, love the rabbit. the The way he's done the armor on the rabbit, it's all like this nice grey, and then that little bit of brass on the, the chalice on the chest piece. I tell you what, though, those uh, I think, it, yeah. Hairs. The, the hairs in the game are Sorry, really, really good, but they're dicks. <laughs> they're, they're dicks. They're, they're just so good for the, the like the gold that you pay for them. So they're like hairs are cool, but dicks. So. <laughs> uh, wow. We got a question there from Doug the Fog Ben. Uh, how does the game play? Is it scenario heavy or is it warband versus warband? 
Uh, it's like um, uh, Mordheim of old. So if you want to, if you want a game that's very much like that, um, Michael was very much inspired by by that. So you make a warband, you play it against another warband, and you go through different scenarios, and you, your warband gets better and better and better, and uh, becomes uh, as mighty as you, as, you, as you want to. So it's very cool. Very and cool. yes, I would love to do a let's play. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Hopefully the next time you're over, which uh, by <laughs> I don't know by this, it might yeah. be the awards or it, it might be, be that, yeah. or it could just be my wedding. So. Could be your wedding, yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm I'm hopefully going to come over at a time when I'm not meant to be doing something else entirely. Yeah. So <laughs> that would be rather good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So next up we have Soldados, Burrows and Badgers, continuing on. I see uh, a theme building here. Did Ben make this list today? No, no. I actually put in this list. He, as he well. chose the train, and then I chose the model. Yeah, but I want to show you the train here, John, because I think oh, you'll so appreciate good. this as well. Uh, well. I love the name of this train as well. What was it? What was it called? Notting Hill. Uh, yes, I think it was. It's yeah, it's Notting it's Hill. It's Notting Hill is ready for a salute 2019. So. Uh, Whoever's going over to Salute this year is going to see this fantastic looking terrain for it. It's it's just gorgeous. I think I really love the vibrance, mm. like the vibrancy of color in this, because mm-hmm. uh, you've got like some like really dark and shaded places where the tavern is, and then you have the like nice brightness of the the footpath. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me this, Ben, out of interest: How big is the play area for Burrows and Badgers? Uh, they suggest that you play on a three by three, uh, or you can also throw on play on a three by two. So you do a slightly a slightly uh, longer board, mm. um, just to sort of mix up the you know the way that movement stuff works and the fact that you get into combat quicker and kind of things like that as well. Yeah. But um, it's three by as I say, it's you know quite small scale really, and mm. it's it's good to have nice big packed terrain boards because. There's lots of mechanics in the game for sneaking and hiding and like laying ambushes on other characters. So a board like that is is pretty perfect. So yeah. can you like hide behind the raspberry bushes and have a munch? You know, recover some health. You can do. You can. Yeah. You can hide <laughs> behind bushes, heal up, and then <laughs> jump out with a knife and stab a passing bunny if you want to. So. <laughs> it all sounds so delightfully horrid. <laughs> Red Wall meets Watership Down. There you go. Yeah. So, I wish I oh, that oh the horror. <laughs> if you want to go in, go in and uh, click some of these buttons, I can't, unfortunately, right now, because I have to log in. And if I log in, I show people's IPs. Oh, yeah. So I can't that. do that. But if you want to do so for yourself, uh, give them some nominations. And even give some comments as well. I firmly believe that I, whenever I see projects, I try and leave a couple of comments in the mornings. Um, I think comments are so much nicer. Uh, feel more validated. Mm. I think I love this little forge and even just the signs on them. It's ridiculously cute. <laughs> Is that Madame Char- S- Stories? Maybe? I don't know. Bed- oh, Bedtime Stories, no. I think it's called. Bedtime Stories. <laughs> like a story of a house. That's cool. Amazing. I love it. I've, I've still <laughs> got my uh, Sarissa versions of the. Of the terrain to actually put together and build uh-huh. now, man, I feel I feel guilty. <laughs> it's sitting in a bag somewhere because moving and stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's a it's quite a good idea, Sundancer. Maybe we'll actually do that. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. pretty good. Um, I also I love the fact that this terrain is utilizing the most precious of resources for any model mm. builder: friggin' coffee stirs. Oh yes. I think we have in the region of about. 9,800 of them. It's great because now we no longer have to uh, <laughs> go to grind. beg for them. Yeah, go to the local coffee shops and start stealing them. We just them. go to we the have kitchen about 10, now. 10,000 of them. It's great. Bridges and fences will never be uh, be, be lacking now. And I, since since we've got them, we've built none. <laughs> don't encourage them yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've only ever been used for stirring coffee. What? That's about it. Yep. No, maybe maybe you're, you're just stirring the coffee with them so you can give them an aged and worn look. There maybe, you go. Yes. Uh, there you go. Ben knows how it goes. Yeah. Oh, 
it's it's so nice to see how this train has come together because this is it is beautiful it, yeah. it looks as if it's been like 3d printed because we've seen so much so many 3d printed stuff yeah currently. and then you see the amount of scratch building that the yeah is being printed the roofing because that yeah, yeah the roofing shingles are amazing looking because that looks as if it's been made by um sarissa or a 3d mo sculpt Yep. And then you get to see the scratch and you see, of Yeah, it. The, the chimney's made out of milli putt and the walls look like they're made out of foam that's been scraped in with a pen and stuff. It's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives things like that higgledy-piggledy look because yeah. it's all been done by hand, which I think is really perfect for bros and badges. This is so. such a good idea, that though. Sort of, that, that sort of rustic like, Kentish countryside. Whenever, yeah. yeah, whenever you look at the chimney, you're like, well, that it seems a bit lopsided. Let's see what he's done here. It's, it's been held up yes. by wire. That's cool. That's a nice touch. <laughs> That's very cool. Very chocolatey looking base head. That does. It does look like <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a galaxy ad right here. Uh, Robert, yes I did. Uh, that was a couple of years ago now. Uh, making that lake village thingy with coffee stirs. That was a somewhat of a nightmare. <laughs> this, is, this is very inspiring. It is. It's really, really, really nice. But, oh. So many things going on. And oh, is he the, making he oh, he making, making the bushes, bushes and that hedges stuff. with. <sighs> so we have another use for scouring pads, then we can actually make little bushes and stuff out of it if we pry it apart. It seems so. Mm. Um, that's nice that he actually like he's made the tree. And I think. I don't know. Whenever I think tree, and I always think of like making the board first. Yeah. I never think of making the actual like. Set and making the, and the stuff. elements and then. Yeah, fitting them onto a board uh, allows him to pack it down and stuff. Because if he's taking it to salute, obviously he has to pack it down. And yeah, make sure every tile and stuff works mm -hmm. right. I don't know if this is uh, purposeful, but I love that watercolor effect mm. on the stones. I say watercolor like it a has proper that, like uh, it's like marble a, tile yeah, it, slate. It's like a slate sandstone sort of. You see it's it. The, it's the kind of thing you see in Purbeck and stuff down yeah. in Dorset. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I wonder is that from something else as well, or is that being sculpted? Let's have a nosy. This is all very inspiring. Really, yeah. really well done. Even like even the scar pads, the broken fence. Mm -hmm. oh, it's even got hinges on the fence. It, There's so much detail gone into this. I'd really, I'd really love to give this a go myself and make a little board. Should be a lot of fun. Right, John, we've got coffee stirs, so let's go. Yeah, we have coffee. Man, that, have that, coffee stirs and... <laughs> that gate is amazing. Isn't, Isn't it? it? <laughs> it's like who who would have thought that you know you could get so excited over a gate? <laughs> even like even just the sketches and stuff, that's this is really mm. we should have went the project the other way, but we this should've. is uh, this is pretty cool because you get to see it's like a sequel of seeing what's happening. Yeah. Um, it's like memento. <laughs> uh, but it's really nice to see where people are like going from their sketches to the finished design. Mm. Uh, I think even seeing the project the way we've seen it is like you know you see the impressive piece of train that it is, mm -hmm. and then moving back and actually seeing how it's built, it seems a lot more doable than what we initially thought. Because I would imagine that a lot of people, like myself, maybe looked at that and thought. Oh well, that's a lot of 3D printed terrain. Yeah. Can I? Can we just look at that wicker fence a bit longer? Because that <laughs> that is either that's woven. If, if you've genuinely woven that, I am. I t I would take my hat off if I was wearing one because yeah. that must have taken a lot of time to get that right to get that wow. proper look. Are these beehives? They are beehives, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that looks as if it's been properly woven. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just get Soldado into the studio to build some stuff. Yes. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you bring that tree into the studio, Ben will come over, we'll get a game. Oh, we'll do a Let's Play on his table. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're ever going to salute, you know, find him and say, here, guys. Here, now. Come here. on over. <laughs> I'm making the pulp for the trees. I feel I, I feel like take I feel like oh. taking my birds and badges miniatures to salute just so that I can like place them on the board to take pictures. Just to take photos. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, look card... look at the board I'm playing on. <laughs> this this cardboard pulp idea is really starting to 
take shape in my mind, pun intended. It's cut. It's <laughs> it's cheap as well. Mm. It would give us a use for all the cardboard boxes we keep throwing. Yes, it would. Um, oh, that's, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I believe we actually. I think we gave him a community uh, golden button last year for the stuff that he'd done when he started making the project. I think. Mm. Uh, it's so nice just to see everything come together now. Mm. And it looks like the sort of techniques he's used when he's building the buildings has, has got sl- like better and better as he's gone through as well, which is yeah, cool. Definitely. Like yeah. the finish on the buildings, com- like when you see that tavern compared to some of the other buildings and stuff. There's like that extra e- that extra step done to them. I think it's really cool. So, because yeah. it looks here, like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six buildings in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a few more being added. Is this but, um, are yeah. you loafer in the chat? Are you? I think you're sold out. Are you sold out? Because he's <laughs> saying like the the circle is from Osworn and this that and the other. Took quite an hour. Took him out. Yeah. If that's you. If that's you, we want you over. We want yeah. <laughs> we want you over. We want to get a game on on this board because that is such a beautiful piece. Mm-hmm. Really nice. I can see so many like objectives. As well, like, you're, like some of the badgers going in to steal the honey from the honey hive, and he has to get across the street without being noticed. Are they honey badgers? Nighttime, yeah. <laughs> Just honey badgers. Where you have a, a, a watch up in the windmill or mm-hmm. in the town. <sighs> there, Ben's not going to be um, fangasming in the chat now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you want to, like, send me some of this stuff. Uh... <laughs> no, Ben, we can't do that. Okay, let's let's move on. Let's stop drooling over this train for a while. Yeah, that's it, pun dancer, exactly. Uh, <laughs> when when Soldado brings that table over, I will be in my minis. <laughs> okay, so next project we're going to have a look at, and it is uh, the Rogue Trader New School. New School. By Piers. Uh it appears we already know using old very 1980s very figures to play more time this time reversing that theme while be using the original in 1987 rogue trader rules trying to project this truly with the current gw plastics mm. so it's one of those things where he's taking all that kind of aesthetic for those old school miniatures mm-hmm. using all the new stuff and all those amazing new miniatures that games workshop make and then using them with those old rules which i think is awesome yep. so especially when you see that team there that combat servital support yeah. Like that guy in the middle and all the squad around them and stuff. Oh, the, so the guy cool. on the guy on the right of that this here that picture, no, no, the mm. far right with the the mask sort of helmet thing. That is really creepy and awesome. At the same time. Okay. I can't I can't remember where the body's from, but the helmet is definitely from the what Battle Wizard set, I think. But I went to so, uh, allow my browser to capture the cursor. There we go. It should work now. Hopefully, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, so this that guy. guy I'm looking at. I really like uh, this guy in the far left. Mm-hmm. Like, just the, the shading and the highlighting on that. Mm-hmm. It's really popping. It looks like looks like a stormtrooper lost in a different universe. <laughs> a stormtrooper that became competent. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, John. <laughs> Not going to lie. Like, come on. Shots. But how did the Empire get so great? Shots fired and now hit. Uh, and actually hit, yeah. <laughs> how did the Empire get so great when their stormtroopers can't hit anything? Huh? I don't know. Maybe they just sacrifice training for building and recruiting. Maybe that's why their ships are so huge, because they just realise that they can't get the guys trained well enough to, shoot, to hit anything, so they just literally open up the cargo doors above a planet and dump them on them. And be like, ah, wait at numbers, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> They'll destroy the ecosystem soon enough. We'll just have to wait 20 years. <laughs> this is a gorgeous project and gorgeous minis. He's gonna do the. He's gonna create. He's gonna do the entire project using only uh, GW plastics, mm. uh, and then using those plastics to do all the conversion work and stuff. So everything you see here has come from those in some way, which is cool. Yeah. I really like this paint scheme, like this paint technique. Yeah, it's like the block um, highlighting, block shading and highlighting. Yeah, because yeah. I know some people don't like it and think of it as almost cheating in a way. But I think it's like it's got that um, cell shaded look. I want to say Picasso look. Mm. I where it's, you yeah. know, 
Uh, the brush strokes are there, but they're on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Like it's more emph- it's not emphasis on shading or highlighting. It's the emphasis on the color more mm. than anything. Mm. Like, like even just on the boots of this guy, mm. you can really see like it's still shaded, but it still looks like boots. Yep. Yeah. The thing the thing that's really cool about these as well is that as well as them being good for him taking back in time to use in Rogue Trader and stuff, they could also be used for. Um, I, I think we talked with Cad and Ben about Inquisitor 28 like quite a, a while ago on the weekender and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you, if you can get your hands on those Inquisitor rules and sort of scale it down to 28 mil, these would be perfect for that because they have that kind of inquisitorial henchman sort of uh, adverse, adversary vibe. And again, that has that role playing style to it as well. Yeah. So suddenly you, you can see like not Sorry. just your space marines, but also your guardsmen and your imperial and your inquisitors going up against people like this and the void pirates and stuff. So, it's very true. Cool. Like what um, uh, Jerry is saying, it's also it's pretty fast, and Doug is saying they look great as well. And I'm just wondering, yeah. like, uh, saying Robert and I says they look great from a gaming distance, and I just kind of want to make that like visibly. So like that's what they look like up close, and then if you're looking at it from a distance, like they still look good from a distance. Yeah, uh, adding that fake blur, like even that, that's still messy. But the colors are so vibrant that it looks good. Mm-hmm. Fantastic stuff. I really like that paint sky. I really like that paint style. And I wish. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, going to try and learn it for your um, for card on Overlords? Or I can I can kind of mimic it myself, but I just need more practice. Um, these kind, these kind of would help in that kind of in this in the sort of style that you do carry on overlords in as well because you have those like spots of color with then all the metal as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good thing to sort of re- repeat over onto them actually. And, and based on our conversation, what was it two weeks ago now? Because I wasn't in last week. It was two weeks since I've been in a hobby. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I still haven't picked a force for. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, John. Will. We'll find something for you. Maybe I'll just go really uh, weird and go fire slayers. All right. Uh, all that flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have some Frostgrave minis as well. Um, this is very interesting terrain from Doug the Fog. He's in the chat. So if any questions, feel free to ask. Yep. Um, Doug the Fog is one of my inspirations. I love Doug <laughs> the Fog. He is makes it? me paint things and get excited about uh, putting together models and everything it's great so, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah we usually see uh, saga from Doug the Fug sometimes a little bit of bolt action do we oh, we've seen a I bit think, of everything uh, from Doug a bit of saga a bit of, bit of stuff like that so. yeah um, but now we're seeing some frost grave so the variety in his um, painting style just skyrockets um, I love this I might be biased because I think I mentioned last week that I just love anything that's just carrying luggage. <laughs> oh god, Lug- luggage and boxes and <laughs> shelves. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Just it just pleases me. We need to get uh, Lance a miniature of Patsy from Holy Grail. With all the boxes and chairs and stuff hanging over his back and holding the two coconuts. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but one of foreground's dwarves are kinda of like that, yeah. I suppose. Um Oh, these look so cool, like, just all stacked up here. If we can get the image to load here. There we go. I really do like the basing and the fact that (laughs) the more I look at it, the more I realise that Doug's only picking out a few quite vibrant colours, which are usually the beards, (laughs) which (laughs) makes them stand out quite well. That's the way you paint doors, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forget everything else, it's the beard that counts. I like what he's done here. Is me. He's made the base dark mm-hmm. to bring your eye level up to yep. the mini. But at the same like, time, like their oh. yeah, no, their their own color palette is still quite dull. But he's made it so that the mini is the only focus of the yeah. the whole thing. I really and like yes. this guy here in the background. Really stands out. Yep. I think um, yep. if you wanted to try and experiment, a little bit of like lighting come from. The yeah. lamp, Ooh, maybe yeah. well, <laughs> brighten the lantern up even a little bit. Even yeah. if you don't want to try source lighting. Yeah, even just a little bit of like highlight around the edges of the mm-hmm. lamp, I think, would be kind of cool. But then again, the, the lamp could be like, it could be so used and worn that, you know, it could be just dull. Uh, yeah, burnt. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I love that, I, I really like what he's been doing with the, the Oathmark kits. Mm-hmm. That, like, that plastic kit's really nice to see done like that. 
I've painted up some of the ones that I made because I was kind of trying to use them for the bit of Lord of the Rings. But I went with a, a, like a very bright color scheme and I don't think it quite works compared to when you see sort of like this slightly more dulled look to them. I think it mash, it meshes together the the plastic sculpts are a bit these, more, I think. Are these the ones that you're talking about, Ben, that's like Jigsaw? Or like Legos? Yes, yes. All, all of the North Star plastics are basically Lego. Lego. You can sit there and just get all the different plastic kits and be like, ooh, I'll stick an arm on from here and a head from here. <laughs> so, yeah, because it's... I assume the wizard is maybe a, a set piece or something, but yeah, the, the wizard and the apprentice are uh, metals from North Star, but uh, but even yeah, looking, let's are the dwarves? They're all quite different. Yeah, all the, all the dwarves are plastic apart from the guy holding the lantern, which is probably a resin from it, I, I think they're resin, but it's from Cybor or yeah. Shkibor, however you say it. So, yeah. but they don't look. Bugger off! We say Legos. <laughs> so that's what we've grown up with. Um, but they don't look out of place. Largos. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just causing controversy. But bugger off! Yeah. Hurry up and come up here, because like black templars are needed. <laughs> <laughs> you you wouldn't have seen that, Ben. Were you in the chat on my last um, painting stream? No, I don't think I was. Uh, I was in the one before that when you were doing the dreadnought stuff. Yeah. But, uh... I wasn't um, in the space room one. Bug Bugger off is um, very kindly donating a fairly substantial Black Templar force. Oh, oh, possibly one of the coolest chapters in 40k. Damn Ooh. right. Makes me regret not just painting them my my own stuff Black Templar anyway. But there you go. <laughs> I think we've seen these things here before, but it's just like admiring the shields. The are these like an older kit? These skeletons or those are old Games Workshop skeletons. Yeah, because right? they have that real sort of. Mm -hmm. oh, They've got a belly in their spine. J Jason and the Argonauts sort of look <laughs> to them. <laughs> look at the size of that I spine. I know that's the size of that spine. That's a sexy spine. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's in the corner trying not to laugh. <laughs> Go get over there, Ryan. <laughs> You'll see some sexy spine. You'll see some sexy belly spine. Oh my God. They're they're quite swollen. Look at look at that look at that look at belly. That. Oh wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yep. I, th I think they've been impacted. He drank too much it. milk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Those are the skeletons that were a pain in the ass to put together. Those back in the day. Some really nice frostgrave stuff there. Um, and also some of his rangers shut a deep in there, which I'm also tinkering away on at the moment. So. Mm -hmm. So, awesome work, Doug the Fug. Um, Congratulations. <clears throat> Next up. Thank I, you for more inspiration from you, sir. <laughs> so, this was uh, requested for last week, but we didn't have much time. And then we've got another project, like, straight after this one as well, which John will probably have some words to talk about, Amanda. About. Um, I've seen it in the running order, and I'm just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, well done. Let me, let me scroll down to the very end, because I know that... So, this was the starting position. Uh -huh. This is the starting at the race. Uh, which was almost a year ago, June wow. 10th, 2018, so just before we went to um, UK Games Expo. But we started back up on January the 4th, um, so a whole year to think about what the colour scheme is going to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm only joking about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have seen here, we've got uh, other Dark Angels models, so we've taken some inspiration, looking at what she's already done before. But this My cool, head. This afro. <laughs> Wow. I imagine that's why he can't wear his helmet. Is that glorious afro? You can't. Like... Man, is that is that a spell crew head? <laughs> is that a spell? Is that why you were telling me last week to to buy the afro heads? Because yeah, you're, why not? That's what you're doing. Why not? <laughs> There's yeah. always time to groove in the forty first. <laughs> disco doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the disco doctor. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> it is spell crew. I thought so. <laughs> Disco Doctor, otherwise known as the Poth Carrier of Dark Angels. <laughs> I love the tidy up work you've done on that. Yeah, just yeah, because like that's exactly here. how bad my straight line work is, and then, and then yeah. when that tidy up, it's great. Are these two different colours, or these? Yeah, it looks green? like a black in the the original dark mm -hmm. green. Mm -hmm. That's that's very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. There, well done, Amanda, on that. 
Oh, is this... Is that a stencil? Or is that a free hand? Uh, that's a transfer. Free hand. If it was, I would have been graciously impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all the details in. Very nice. Getting some weathering up. That weathering really works quite mm. wonders on the out there. I really like it. It's nice to see people still wanting to do the standard Space Marine armies rather than everybody going uh, jumping on the Primaris train. But mm -hmm. I've I, I learned recently, and thanks to Justin building some really stupid filth lists that he's going to start building soon. Um, oh God! <laughs> yeah, thirty scouts and also thirty scouts with sniper rifles, killing a character every turn. Um, <laughs> that's not forty k. That's not that's not fun at all. Um, but I realised that like the the standard marine stuff in the codex, current codex, is still really friggin' good. That's that's good though. Uh, which is nice to see. I'm, I'm surprised they. Well, oh, look at that! <laughs> I love that these. I don't know what they are, but I Files love that they're of important stuff. I love that they're being used. That's a, that's a very nice little touch yeah. right there. Oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. Really, really nice. I have some weathering stuff going on here now. Let's get full browser. Oh, we can't see it. We can't see it! <laughs> Let's bring it into Photoshop. That's a damn close up. <laughs> That's good. Look at look at the hair detail on that. <laughs> oh, I know, man. Um, yeah, that dusting is mm. really nice, I think. It's great to see how Amanda's come on since uh, we started doing these hobby hangers, especially when she was doing the little competition piece. Yeah. And seeing how clean her painting's been coming on in the last year or so. True yeah. enough, actually. Um, that'd be an interesting thing to have a, a check out on Amanda. Go back to your like competition piece and see if like see how much you've progressed mm. um, in that, because I guarantee there's quite a few. You got the, uh, the resin turret thing for the razor back to you. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> I love how clean this uh, cloth work is mm. on that. It's so tidy. Like the base coats are beautifully tidy, mm -hmm. and if you like, if you can nail that, you can. You know, your army is going to look great regardless. So a touch of purple in there too. <laughs> <laughs> these these big wing things. It's like the always. most impractical helmet ever. <laughs> It'd be like, easy to pick up though. I can't. Yeah, it's easy to pick up, but very hard to walk through doorways. <laughs> Imagine if you turn your head. It'd be quite a significant movement yeah if, if, if you try if you try to muscles will be massive by the end of the day yeah if you tried to turn your head really quick I'd imagine the weight of the helmet would just continue the momentum round and you might end up breaking your own neck <laughs> so Amanda says that she's going to be painting another tech priest ancient engine seer uh, later and compare it that'd be an interesting project that would be see. I actually have one of my original stone templars that I sit and look at and go you're a pile of poop, and then I look at my new ones and go, you're slightly less of a pile of poop. <laughs> um, but some really nice paint work there, Amanda. Good, good work. Have you been airbrushing your base coat on, Amanda? Because that is really tidy. That, is, like that is definitely looks like airbrush work to me. Beautiful. It's so, it's so nice when you get to airbrush stuff. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome stuff, by the way. Uh, we we'll just paste that in. So... If you want to cool across and give some uh, skill and idea tutoring and uh, give some comments as well, feel free to do so. Next up, we have another Amanda's project done. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Don't worry, we'll screw down to the end. I don't know we'll how I feel about this. this. I'm worried about this. So it's a good start. It's a nice start. Yeah? <laughs> I know where this is going. And I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, you guys can like join in with us as well so feel free to click that link and join us on this beautiful journey that John's just about to take part in oh god <laughs> <laughs> wonderful start <laughs> I mean you gotta give it like going from <laughs> going from pink to this like rusted tracks is amazing it's gonna be wonderful because John's gonna be crying and I'm gonna have to talk about Tanks. And I don't know anything about tanks. I don't need to tell anybody anything about this. It's brilliant. So, 
I'm not really sure what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> I assume like it, it's a weathering technique that maybe. Uh, yes. Yeah. She applies it and then rubs it off later. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> I love this here because this looks actually like. I don't know if this is a transfer or if this is a, a marker pen, it but it actually good. looks like it's been sprayed. Because uh, <laughs> whenever you apply a spray, it comes off and it yeah. fades away. You okay there, John? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the weathering is really good. The little really well. acrylic paint pen. Ah, nice touch. Yes, that was very good. Uh, really well done for that I kind mean, of effect. Damn, Amanda, that weathering <coughs> on, on 15 mil is friggin' spot on. Especially doing that over pink as well. Yeah. Like that's that takes some daring. That so. is that is a very <laughs> cool little project. John, do you want me to help you with this? Do you? Like, is it is it is it so much to say that if I do this here, is this going to help? Like lilac kind of looks. There cool. we go. Okay, right, fine. You can do it. Is that is that better for you? No, do you know what? No, do you, do you know what? Just, just let Manda enjoy the moment. <laughs> <laughs> just let her enjoy the moment. <laughs> yes, that was a, a fine job. It was a very impressive. Beautiful piece of weathering work. Really, really tidy. I'm not going to comment on the colour. And I don't, I don't have to change the hue to say that. Either. No. Uh, really well done. Excellent. Now, if you can do an entire US force in <coughs> pink, uh, pink combat, so that'd be great. So. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> just clean them up. On mentioning that. <laughs> Do you, do you, either of you two remember the old TV app for the Cadbury's Fuse Bar? No. No? No. No. It had guys, like soldiers, wearing pink and purple camouflage, driving a, driving around a battlefield with pink and purple tanks driving about. How did that make you feel, John? It was hilarious because there's a picture of me when I was like 12, sat on the tank they used in the, the advert. Still I have found that exact <laughs> advert. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's hilarious. Like, oh, I've got chocolate on my tunic, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, page not fine. What was that one? What was that? That was maybe just... Is that the advert, Ben? Yes, that is the advert. <gasps> yeah. oh, should, we, should we turn it I, I didn't actually watch it. I just found it on YouTube, so... <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, Manda, there's Manda's inspiration to, to make a Flames of War Force. Yep. <laughs> Wow, these are actual. This is a real thing. This was a thing. <laughs> this. What the hell's going on? Chocolate on my tunic, sir. <laughs> oh, okay, it's a grenade. <laughs> All right. Where's the tanks? It drove past at the start. Oh, right, okay. I got fuse on my tunic. It was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Mr. Stainless. Series so one's the Warlord game Strontium Dog painting tutorial. Uh, very interesting as well because this is one of the first uh, tutorials out for Crunk, mm -hmm. which um, I'm not going to go back on my word. I still think it looks like a weird looking model. <laughs> <laughs> um, but very interesting to see what's happening. Uh, I watched the video as well, and uh, Sam, he doesn't do highlighting on his other models. He keeps he, he keeps refusing to do it. But he keeps he's done asking it on this me one. for um, highlighting tutorials. Right. He keeps wanting me to like sit by with him and show him uh, highlighting. I techniques. think he's done quite a good job on this though. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like I don't know what the original character looked like, but if you want to see like a quick painting tutorial on how to uh, paint grunk Warlord games is pretty mm. interesting and he goes through quite a lot of stuff and I think that's probably all you need as well for that. My only criticism is the base. I think uh, if he used a little bit of like green stuff to because what he did was he layered up yeah. the texture paint on that which I think was a little bit unnecessary. I think if he just maybe even carved it off it's because you can see there Yeah, you can see the lip of that uh, you can maybe just carve that off or build that up I think that would be maybe the build it up with uh, a different material first. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the the end result is great. Yeah. It's. I think it's that thing of any basing though. Like you don't want it all to be one thing, mm. because very, 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 very few times is the earth just grass or mud yep. or sand yep. or something. So. Yeah. 
Um, but I, li- I like the work on the character. I think it's a really good way of getting the, wh- the white looking good. So. Mm-hmm. And, it, yeah. and it contrasts nicely with the very pale flesh too. So, Really nice. Awesome work. Uh, hi, by the way, Mr. Snow Yak. Nice to have you catch us. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something that I thought I put up. I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, it is an arch hobby light by Wise Old Bird. <laughs> Uh, very cool name. And let me just paste in the link from Sam's project. So if you want to go across and see some pink tutorials on that, this here one is the Arch Hobby Light. I will remember to post links in at some point, all the time. But <laughs> I, th- I think he was getting a little bit of sick of like normal lamps mm-hmm. just getting in the way uh, and then just constantly moving these lamps. Mm. As well, because I kind of I think everyone kind of struggles with just lighting on a miniature at some point. Um, but I got this 3D print from Thingiverse, mm-hmm. which is essentially just an arc. These added in these LED strips, mm-hmm. which in the center uh, there's. I like that it's collapsible. That's the cool thing about that. Yeah, there's supposed to be less photos in this than what I saw earlier. But I think it's the same LEDs as what we have in the office. Yeah, probably. Um, I think it's good. I think what you could do is uh, what Lloyd was talking about a couple of weeks ago is like whenever the light, whenever you see the light right in your peripheral, Mm -hmm. it can really damage your eyes. Yeah, so you want to diffuse it or maybe change the angle of it a little? Either that or put like... um, Put a lip on that? Yeah. Put a lip on that so it hides the light and yeah. direct it like. Um, Line light. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, imagine horse visors. Like you want it only to point in a certain direction. Yeah. Uh, mm. I would imagine like, because that while that looks good, I think it might be sore in the eyes after a little yeah. while. If you, yeah. Because if you have an occasional glance up towards something like your paint rack or something, you, you don't you even have to glance up. You'll yeah. like it'll just be there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good it's a good idea that I've seen a lot of people doing it maybe not as um, in such big thick like um, structures as this but I've seen people doing it with just strips yep. yeah and they they basically have it on like something that can bend but will will sit straight and then you just click it into two things and then you can have it arched over your uh, your painting uh, desk yeah. well, it's, it's one of the, it's one of me some photos of his home lighting yeah. project at the minute and it's great yeah I'm not gonna ruin anything. like even if you look at a standard lamp like this one in the background, it has a lip mm. over the light bulb. Yep. And that's probably the reason why. Uh, because I feel like even though these do have that very sh- small lip across there, it's not enough, mm. I think, to... And it, it, I think if you don't have it, and maybe even greaseproof paper yeah. over the top of it, it would dull it a little bit. But if you had like just that little bit of lip... Yeah. Uh, over it would really save your eye strain a lot more than you'd think. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious as to if it helps painting. Yeah. Because it'd be kind of cool, like every angle you have, no matter where you are. Really I think I think it's it. key because it, it it stops you kind of hurrying. A lot of people do like, and also because it's pure, it's white light. Yeah. As well, it's one of those things where you're going to see all the things that you've missed. So it gives you a chance to like actually f- properly finish the model rather than going, you know, going through all the stages of doing the base coat, the highlighting, blah blah blah, putting the wash on, and then going, ah, oh, bollocks, <laughs> I missed. <them." laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, okay. I next missed up, a pack. <laughs> uh, did I link? I did link that one. So next up we have Gorka's Harry Potter miniatures. Oh. Um, this Voldemort is that Voldemort. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that before. Gorka does some amazing painting. Mm-hmm. Um, so here we have the Dementor. I l- absolutely love the like just the wash of indigo mm. on here, uh, and then just the, the small dry brush of like tears around it as well. And is that the rib cage coming out of it? Looks like. Yeah. He says he's. What is it? I did the Dementor with desaturated reds and highlighting to highlight the black. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It gives. Oh. It gives a very. Uh, ethereal look to it, I think. Mm. It still makes it feel very solid mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah, it's it's not your typical ethereal where it's kind of like bright and airy, but I think it's what we we always mention is like shade. Don't shade black with black. Yeah. Um, 
Like if, you're going, if you're going to paint black, don't paint black. Yeah. <laughs> um, only use black for the deepest shadows. Mm -hmm. But I think this works really nicely. Is that he's like base coated in black and then he shaded it up uh, mm -hmm. with other colors. Because if you look on anything, black is never solid black. Yep. No, no. <coughs> then we've got the Weasley twins. Does it, doesn't it look like the guy, I, I, whether or not it's Fred or George, but the one at the bottom looks like he's got a knife, not a wand. <laughs> it looks yeah. like he's going stabbing. <laughs> it, yeah, it does look like even like a fishing knife. Yeah, it's a little stabby. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's, like, maybe it's, it's like just that. Groove it's really it's that groove. Biker groove. Got, yeah, it does look great, <laughs> Biker groove. Um, Screw this magic malarkey. I'm going to knife you. <laughs> I love I love that they try like they're matching. I know yeah. that I know that you know because they're twins they kind of it's by default that they should match. But I'd love to see like uh, just different characters because they they are very individual people yeah. in the show and the and the stories. I think he would like sort of checkered shirt. That looks yeah. like a good checkered shirt right there. <laughs> um, and then we have. Hermione, <coughs> Harry, and Ron. That's a, that cape. It's beautiful shading on that. Really, yeah. really nice. Not holding a gun, as we can see here. You're a <laughs> or, or a knife. Very nice. Oh, I like the Hermione model. Play, mm. The way they've played with that scarf's really cool. It adds a. It adds I, a I've grace. been ta I've been talking about like the Harry Potter models. I've been kind of going off on a rant that sometimes because whenever the Voldemort. One or whenever the Voldemort one came out, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And when Albus Dumbledore came out, even though it was like you could separate them off the base, I still looked thought it looked phenomenal because they're actually doing something with magic. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I think these characters, like that, that's pretty good, pretty thematic. This one's good. Where's Ron? Ron looks like he's looking. He replace that with a mobile phone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he um, he does look a little confused. Yeah. And I know that th it, this is his, like broken one, but I think I think they can really do something more with magic. Mm. It is difficult though. How I mean, how how dynamic do you want the miniatures to look? Because at some point they're going to look too fantastical. If you get what I mean. Yeah, but it's a fantastic <coughs> universe. It it's is, like, but you can overdo it. Yeah, like I I would love to see Dobby. Like this looks good as it is, but if you were to like change it up, you know the way they do the teleport. It's like wrapping, it's like ribbons wrapped yeah. up. I think it would be really cool if like, he was like mid-ribbon wrapping, mm. but doing like finger click. And I think that looked pretty cool. And then Creature, like he's perfect as he is. Yeah. I think if he had like just a, a cloth, because he's always uh, cleaning the master's yeah. window frame or picture frame. Ron is always confused, yes, that's true. And we've seen the horse before, it's magnificent looking. Uh, did we paste this one? Two, three, three. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, okay, so next up we have what is uh, probably the most impressive thing that is we've maybe ever seen. And not just because of the project itself, but what the meaning is behind it. Mm -hmm. So this was inspired by Ryan's project over there. Ryan, if you want to come over and talk with us, you're free to come across. So this is by um, Blinky465. Uh, we may have seen his like interactive board game before, yeah. but what he's... Let me take me us down to the very bottom. So he's taken like some of the motorized examples from these things, and um, whereas Ryan was talking about like disability in board gaming, and how to make it more accessible, he took that quite literally, and made a weekend project of making this amazing looking like little paint holder yeah um, for anyone who maybe doesn't have access to like both arms or maybe something or that just doesn't needs have the best dexterity yeah. or something um, and it has everything working it's it's amazing how well and how quickly this was brought together because ryan he's you've been yeah, talking I, quite a bit I about saw, this i saw this on monday morning he started 
making this on Sunday and I came in on Monday morning really early <coughs> and was like, oh, tearing up, because it's so amazing. Uh, he's essentially, he's got two axes of movement. So that's the first axis was kind of angling it um, uh, kind of up and down. And uh, he's since added kind of x-axis rotation to it so that you can you know, get around to the back of the uh, mini and uh, he's been experimenting with joysticks as well mm -hmm. um, uh, to see if they're if, if it's any easier um, different input controls but he's doing uh, it's just an amazing job oh, you can see it turn there it's 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 so, it's so inspiring yeah. uh, and he's been adding he's just been tinkering with it and adding more and more to it uh, but uh, it's stuff like this, uh, making something like this is great, but also talking to people with disabilities and seeing what are their specific needs. Uh, yeah, like just what would be even having the thought of making this yeah. for a start. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing what he's done. It's uh, the thought of like, you know, um, Blinky here clearly has quite good use of his hands. And he's clearly technical, but he's thinking of other people who don't. <gasps> is that my invite? I don't know. I think it is. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to open it here. <laughs> <laughs> Been waiting for them all day. Hello, John. Would I show you this here, actually? So this came in the mail today. I'm I'm waiting pretty much for my like wedding invites and my ring, etc. I have them delivered here because it's just easier because they throw it <laughs> they throw it in my bins otherwise at home. But I got this here today, which was uh, there's a sticker on it saying "Handle with care," and I thought like I can't remember what I bought. Did I buy something glass? And uh, I opened it up. It's uh, foam. it's foam board. foam board. It's foam board for my board games because I want to make some board game inserts. <laughs> and I was wondering, like, because it, it might yeah, because the the proposal lady handed this to me as if I was about to defuse it. <laughs> 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 um, but as you said, Ryan, like it's a fantastic project, and um, I think. He's looking for some suggestions on maybe he thought he was going a little bit overboard on this thing. Yeah. But I think the lighting is such a great idea. Unfortunately, and as you can see, just I'm yeah, pointing at the, the screen as if the viewers can yeah. see what I'm pointing at. Yeah, Sundown you can see the glare. That, yeah, and the, there was a forum post, Sundown surgery is that, oh, you might want to look at Lloyd's project for how he's angled uh, the light in his uh, workshop table. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, awesome. I, absolutely fantastic job this this is a great idea and i think he should be maybe looking at actually producing this yeah producing these and selling them um he's saying as well that uh, if he'd want to send one over to us to have a test around uh, feel free um i think it's an absolutely fantastic idea and I was sent around this morning that you know it's a, a project that started over a weekend. If I was to start this, like it would take me three weeks to even begin to the thought process. To get the wiring. <laughs> uh, but because he had all this at hand, then he just thought to like I'll I'll cut out my own uh, uh, MDF pieces and just get started. Absolutely phenomenal. Yep. Uh, really impressive and inspiring. Uh, Blinky, I hope. I hope you stay on this website for a long time to come because yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see what else you're capable it's very, of. Very inspirational pieces of work. Yeah. Right okay. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Um, next up, we're going to be looking at the actual community spotlights. Um, so we, I have to sign in. So let me bring us to the front camera. John, what would you like to talk about? Do you have anything new that's happening? No. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh dear. Um, I will. I will be saying though, um, thank you to Warlord because I finally got some more Blood Red Skies through. Oh wow! So uh, Friday's live stream will probably be painting maybe a Messerschmitt one one zero or a Focke-Wulf one ninety or something. I think a, maybe a one one zero for them um, because I've missed that. And Charlie even sent me a message going, "Miss you, love you. What's up?" <laughs> no, I, was like, I, I admire guys, your so. bromance. As it's, it's, the, it's the finest bromance. Yeah, because like <laughs> you've got a nice bromance with Charlie. Ryan has got a wee bromance with like Ricard and the guys from Room Seventeen. Um, Justin has a bromance with pretty much everyone. Uh, yeah, he's just cheating on every company. There's a few <laughs> every week. There's a few that like are special to Justin. Yeah, and I think Ben I has a lovely wee bromance yeah. with the Sworn. He does. Yeah, oh. absolutely. <laughs> oh, Michael and Joe, the best. 
<laughs> right. Uh, enough romancing. We have the community spotlight this week, and we picked some amazing projects. Ben, did you see the project I showcased last week? Of uh, I did. the guy visiting Rorsch Drift. I did. I, I thought, thought that was very cool. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was cool. Um, but this week we have um, Art Nut, and this is a, a pff, I don't know how to even explain, but the color schemes on this thing. It's so vibrant and great. So, yeah, you look at this and you think, yeah, yeah, that's that's very colorful, but like just going into the actual like detail of this. Oh my yeah. god, that lighting. Now the thing that the thing that I pointed out about this that I thought was fascinating is that. I think a lot of this stuff here is not is uh, non-metallic metals, right? And the color schemes as a whole have been done to make it look like the characters you would have seen in the old Warhammer comic books they used to do back in the day. Mm. Like all of these look like they could have been ripped from the pages of a graphic novel, which yeah. I think is absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, it's got and, every color on the spectrum on this oh, model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's just the fact that he's it's just the fact that he's managed to sort of mesh together, sort of all these sort of down dirty metals with the, the that sort of orange hue and then the really vibrant green hair as well on those guys, yeah. it's ju it's just stunning. <laughs> so don't don't take punishment from this. Take inspiration. Yeah, we're all we're all thinking the same thing, but we've got to think positive here. PMA. <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't look out of place either on yeah. that like no. gritty looking terrain. It looks like it looks like the front cover to the the game as well, which I think is really good. Mm. Like he's he's managed to keep a lot of those kind of core colors that Games Workshop were using for the new version of Necromunda, yeah. but then done his own thing with it as well, which I think is really cool. So, like if anything, I think uh, GW should just like take this all these minis and just do photographs of them and base the artwork on yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, amazing looking work. If if Ardnut has not done so, I reckon he should send these through to uh, White Dwarf magazine. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they would definitely feature these in there, I think. So. Unless he's already done it, in which case, kudos to you, bro. So. <laughs> I mean, if anything, you've now been featured on Hobby Hangout. You know, we've featured on <laughs> the best. That's hobby that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but next up, we have Yanis uh, Thousand Four. He's got a 3D print wizard's tower. Yeah. Uh, uh, usually he's working on uh, Lord of the Rings stuff, which I suppose this is maybe what this is for. Mm -hmm. he's got, got a little Gandalf. The way. No, no, that's not Gandalf. That's um, the other Saruman. No, that's Gandalf Sor the White. Is it Gandalf? It is Gandalf. Yeah. 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 It's hard to tell from this distance. <laughs> uh, but the thing that I, I think that I liked about this, like, was. Like the painting's great on this. I really like the way the paintings come out. I would potentially do it a little bit more to the stone, uh, just to sort of make it stand out a little bit more. But I love the rest of the painting on it, especially that red roof. Mm, yeah. But the thing that I really wanted to draw people's attention to is just how good that 3D print looks. Like, yeah. Like Warren's been 3D printing things for about a year, and nothing looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, then... you, you have like um, acetate baths and stuff that you can use to get rid of the print lines and all that sort of stuff. But you can even see the print lines on some of the stones here. He's just clearly but using a better printer than what we got. This this was done with a Prusa i3 MK, MK3. I Prusa i3 Mark III. And it looks amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> pretend I know what that is. <laughs> uh, I think I agree with you. Maybe the stone, mm. like, just to differentiate. I suppose it's maybe not finished with this here oh. bit here, but uh, I'm not sure. But I think it's a fabulous paint job. And I think just a little bit of, like, differentiation between the pillars here because yeah. this is like maybe made of just different stones thematically I'm not sure but I think so far it looks great in the sheathing on the and uh, he was stones, saying that he's actually well. used um, a series of oils to do the weathering as well yeah. Um, yeah. just trying to give it that slightly more realistic look and I think it definitely works when you see the stone work there mm -hmm. And sort of like that dripping down from underneath where the rain's caught and, and stuff, or some of the metal has rusted away and dripped down over the stone as well. But yeah, it, it looks quirky and awesome, and I really like the paint scheme. But then I, I was, as I say, that roof is gorge. <laughs> Pure beaut. Pure beaut. <laughs> Uh, you, don't have the again, you don't have the accent, Ben. Uh, pure butte. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
Okay, so next up we have Dr. Ether. Uh, he kind of took a hiatus from posting some stuff. We saw him a few times in the, like, what are you painting now threads and stuff like that, but he's been working hard at it, it seems, with these uh, Speed Freak models. Uh, ben, you pointed out something that to, to me that I had never really seen before in a miniature painting. Do you see this, John? Do you see the, the dripping of the paint? Oh my god. <laughs> I just yeah. I thought that was like a piece of cut metal there, because from the distance I'm. It does at look it. like it, but yeah. it's. It also looks like dripping paint from where the orcs have just slapped it on, which yeah. I think is great. So. <laughs> we can assume that was on. We will probably. Hopefully, that I hope on that is on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also. And love, that, like, you've also got the, the check work and everything else going on. It's 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 gorgeous. I'm so yeah. sick of looking at checkers. Oh, like this this here part here like. Yep. The fact that it's not, it's it's blended in different colors, so it's mm -hmm. actually used. Um, have a look at the checkers now. Yeah. <laughs> um, absolutely lovely stuff. It's I, beautiful work. Yeah. It goes to show just what you can do when it comes to the orcs in 40k as well. Like, for, for anyone who likes hobbying, building, and painting, orcs mm. are an amazing army because. You get to mess around with really, really bright colours. You get to paint really bright-skinned orcs and also work on metal at the same time when you get bored of that as well. And and you get to see pieces like this, which are like amazingly comical and, and very very dark, but also grim and, and 40k. So. I, like, I remember whenever Speed Freaks came out, Warren was kind of like was dissing the, the sculpt of him a little bit because you know, yeah. whenever he thinks of orcs... Uh, vehicles it's big blocky with lots of spikes but i think yep. i i much prefer these i think these look yeah. so much more cooler chris says <laughs> bollocks was it on purpose unless <laughs> it's never paint too perfectly with orcs <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. um awesome stuff um so that's com uh, community spotlight for this week. Uh, stay tuned, and um, it goes out at five p.m. today. Ben, I think. Three p.m. Three p.m. today. Yeah. So if you want five p.m. something else a, entirely, which is very cool as well. Have a closer so. look as well, and throw in your comments of appreciation. It's not just on hobby hangout. Yeah. Um, Yarp. Thank you very much for joining us this week. If you want to come across to ontabletop.com, we have uh, Big Ben talking endlessly, and I know this because I edited it. Uh, it was meant to be like a 15 minute chat about mm. how they core design their models and he went off about 40 minutes on how he makes Rock's Drift <laughs> uh, so if you have a, an interest in Rock's Drift which I actually watched over the weekend as well yeah. I thought it was pretty interesting I didn't tell Jerry this on Monday because I feared that I'd be like locked into a conversation about Rock's Drift <laughs> I, I feared my life but very interesting stuff from Ben Big Ben from foreground and also we have uh, Brandu uh, that Ryan wrote about as well in Retro Recall so if you want to learn about some history of board games feel free to have a look at that as well I realised I clicked over to show that it's over in the left right hand side <laughs> uh, yesterday or this week we have Burning Games in the studio with Big Child Creators so feel free to have a look at the vlog as well thank you very much for joining us this week Hopefully next week we'll have Ben on actual video. Video. I quite like being a sad screen. cat. It meant <laughs> I could drink my tea in the background and no one, no one knew. So. I've heard. <laughs> but we do, we do that all the time, don't we? Yeah. I mean, you don't ah, have to true. be afraid of that. Next week as well, I should potentially be with a actual background, Ooh, so. wow. <laughs> rather than just the white expanse of nothing from the Matrix. So. Wow, Ben, <laughs> impressive. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much for Ryan for hopping in. Thank you very much for John. Thank you for tuning into Hobby Hangout. We'll see you next week. Bye.